To practice our grouping, let's look at some video game sales and try and answer five questions. Number one, which genre has the highest average global sales averaged over all games? Then what are the top five games responsible for the biggest profit in the genre? And then for each platform and year, what's the highest performing game? For each genre, what's the mean and standard deviation for the games? And then as an advanced one that I'm not expecting you to do too much on your own, can you answer whether or not the mean and standard deviation are sufficient approximations are a good representation of the data? To start things off, you can see we've got import pandas, we've loaded in the video game sales, and you can see the first five rows here. It's pretty, pretty normal. We have a name, a platform, a year, the genre, and then the sales broken down into North America, European, Japanese, and other sales, and then global sales at the end. To answer the first question, what's the highest earning genre, is actually fairly open-ended, because I haven't specified whether I mean the genre that has sold the most units in total, or another interpretation might be the genre that has let's say, sold the highest average amount. So if you put out a game, what genre would you get the best average sales for? Now, because the first way of thinking about it is probably the most intuitive way, I assume if people have done this without watching the sort of answers videos, they probably have summed them all up, which means I'm going to be different and take the mean. So I'm going to answer the question, what genre has on average the best selling game? So let us take our data frame here and then simply call group by and then put in, as you guessed it, genre. And then we're going to look at the global underscore sales. And I'm just going to take the mean. Obviously, you could also take the sum. Oh, wow. Every time, literally every time. Okay, here we go. So this one says that if you take the average game, you get mostly action, action. Oh, wait, hang on. No racing. Wait, no role playing shooter. Oh, platform. Okay. What we could do to make this a little bit easier is then take that and then just call sort underscore values. Now, if we simply call that, it will sort it, you know, by the only thing it can. And right down the bottom here, platform is on average the best selling genre. Not that it is the genre that is sold the most. Note the difference. And note that this really means that Mario is super popular. That's pretty much all it comes down to, right? But let's figure it out. Which games carry this genre? So I'm going to first restrict down the data frame into something where we're only looking at the platform genre. So we'll go df.genre is equal to platform. Now, if we pull this up, you can see we have all these platformers here. And then again, I'm going to call sort values. We'll get global sales. Put ascending is equal to false. Now, if we do that, I can also then get the name of it and then just get the first five rows. So that is Super Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario, and you guessed it, Super Mario. And this is where I actually reveal I've never played a Mario game. Please don't run off and give a one star review. I'll play one one day. <laughs> uh, but so far, I haven't never actually owned a Nintendo console. My mum thought video games were off the devil and I never got to get one. And of course, now that I'm an adult and I could get one myself, I simply don't have the time. Okay, so let us now move on back back onto the actual questions and talk about the best genre for platform and year. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll create a new data frame. I'm going to call this one performance. And I'm just going to set that equal to df.groupby. And I'm going to group by quite a few things. I'm going to group by the platform and the year, of course, it's in the question, and then also the genre, because it's also in the question. Now, if I simply do that, I then want to get the global sales. It's the only thing I care about at the moment and sum that up. So I'm going to do the sum this time, not the mean, because it's, you know, per year. Now, if we do that, and then I come down here and go performance, you can see that we have all of this stuff. It's a series. I don't like how that looks. I'm going to come up here and put a reset index up here and that puts it back into a data frame view. So, oh, wow, that, those are some older platforms. But let's see, Xbox One in 2016, role playing was the best game. Interesting. I don't even know what game that would be. Go back to 2011 and we might have Skyrim, but 2016, what came out then? Witcher 3? I have no idea. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, I've gone off track. We haven't actually restricted it down to the best genre yet. This is simply how each genre performed 
win each year with each platform. So you can see the global sales 0.52. This was a terrible year for role playing games, which is probably why I can't remember anything. Shooters were obviously good. I'm sure there's 50 million Call of Duties that came out that year. So what we want to do now is take all of this and now get the best performing genre from this performance data frame. Okay, so I'm going to press A on this cell to give me a new cell above it. And what I'm going to do is look at this and get the best performing global sales for each different platform and year, regardless of genre. So I'm going to call this indexes and that's going to be performance. I'm going to group by and now just like we did before platform and year. I'm not going to group by genre this time. I'm going to get the global sales and then get the index of the maximum value. So if I just print out what these are, you can see that it's simply a list of indices and this corresponds to where in the data frame corresponds, well, where in the data frame is the best genre. So you can see for 2016, it is row 1800. 1800 you can see here is a shooter. So to turn this into a list of genres, we can come down here and go result is equal to performance and then we'll use lock and we'll pass in the indices, right? So the indices are the data frame indices so we can simply pass them straight into lock and then out of that we will get a result which is exactly well it's pretty much what we want however i really don't care about platforms like 2600 i i, I don't even remember well i wasn't alive <laughs> i wasn't in a computer game playing state when that was out so i'm going to restrict this down to some better known platformers let's just say the whole xbox series because i can see them right there so the final thing I'm going to do is come up here and go result and then you know what let's not modify result let's just only view ones that we care about so we'll go result dot platform is in and then I'll pass in the Xbox the Xbox 360 as it's defined in here and the Xbox one. Now if I have a look at that, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of years and that predominantly shooters take the spot with I'm guessing FIFA or Madden or whatever these sports games are eking them out in a couple of years, but shooter and action games seem to be the most popular. And I realize now I can't actually see any Xbox, ah okay, capitalize that O, oh, run again, there we go, some Xbox Ones coming out in 2013. Sure, that's, uh, we've got some interesting data here. In 2008, the highest performing Xbox value was sports with 0.18. Now, don't worry, I checked through the data. The reason this is the case is because it's literally the only entry in our data frame for 2008. Remember, the results you get are only as good as the data frames and the data that you give. Okay, so the next question is, what are the mean and standard deviation in the European sales for each genre? Okay. This is fairly simple to do and we're just going to make use of a the more advanced aggregation methods in pandas group by. So first things first we're going to go stats is equal to df.groupby and we're going to now group by the genre as you might expect and we're going to now aggregate and what we're going to do is say that the mean EU column is equal to, well it's derived from EU underscore sales and the aggregate that we're applying is the mean and then here we have standard deviation EU is equal to EU sales again but now the aggregate that we're applying is standard deviation. Now if I have a look at stats you can see this is great I am just going to throw a reset underscore index here to bring the genre back into the data frame like so and now we have the mean European sales and the standard deviation for each genre. The better question is, is any of that worthwhile? Is this a good representation or is our data simply, you know, not able to be encapsulated by these two simple parameters? So I've given a little code hint in here and what we are doing is we're saying, well, we'll get first every genre that we have and notice there are 12 of them so I've also created a plot that's three by four so that we can simply put each genre on a different subplot. Then what we're doing is we're going through for every genre and for every axis I'm just going to set the axis, set the label, put out a legend and at the moment we get this very blank, very useless diagram. 
but we can make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna come up here and then say, okay, the first thing I want to look at is, well, only the genre that I care about. So I'm gonna go data is equal to df and then go df.genre is equal to g. And I only care about the European sales. So I'm just gonna get that right now, EU sales, right? So now we have data that we care about and we're trying to compare it to what we found here, which we called stats. So I'm gonna come down here and get the actual stat is equal to stats. And then just like we did before, we're gonna pull out the genre. Now, what I want to do is compare the actual data that is a histogram of this data here with what our, our normal approximation would say that we would expect to get just from the stat. So the first thing we have to do is essentially create some bins that we can use for the histogram. Now, I don't want to just use the default bins because I don't control their extents. And if you have outliers, it can be very hard to visualize a histogram properly. So what we're gonna do is be a little bit smarter about how we pick things. Okay, so first up, let's get these bins. So the bins will be equal to numpy.lin space. And now let's say, well, we don't have too much data. So let's say we want 100 bins. We're gonna go from zero, that is zero sales, out to the 99th percent of our data. So we go data quantile 0.99. And this is to remove any outliers that might be well above the average, well above the general population. And I want 100 bins. Now I want something that's a bit smoother so that I can plot the smooth statistics. So I'm gonna call those X's and that's going to be equal to, well, pretty much the same thing, except now instead of 100 points, I want 1,000. And finally, I need to actually get what our stats would predict. So if we were using a normal approximation, we would have that the normal values are equal to norm. So remember that we imported norm up here from scipy stats and we go norm.pdf, the probability density function of x's given the summary, or sorry, given stat.mean and stat.standard deviation. Actually, stats a bit weird to say. I'm gonna change this to a summary because this does represent our summary statistics. So I'm gonna change that to summary. And now what I want to do is now that we have this normal, we're going to plot it and we're going to plot the histogram. Again, this is fairly simple to do. We go ax and we go hist, we put in the data, we specify the bins are equal to the bins, we'll set the label to be equal to data for this one, and we put density is equal to true. Density true means normalize the histogram such that the area is one, the property of a probability density function is that the area is equal to one. So that way we can plot the data and this normal and they should be on top of each other if they represent the same thing. And we will find out. And then we're also going to plot here, obviously X's and normal. And I'll put this label down here as approx because this is our approximation. Now that should be all we need. We're gonna run that, wait for a few seconds whilst it thinks about it and then hopefully get a very informative plot. And here it is. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit more so everything's included. We can see the genres, sports, platforming, racing, blah, 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 blah. We can see the data in red and our approximation in purple. And I hope you note that it is a terrible, terrible, terrible approximation. So the approximation we've made, the mean and the standard deviation, works well when your data looks like a normal distribution. That is, it looks like a Gaussian. This does not look like a Gaussian because all of these distributions are one-sided. In fact, this looks far more like an exponential distribution than a normal distribution, but I would still be very surprised if this was well modeled by an exponential distribution. It simply isn't that likely in my mind. So this here is a very good example of why you would try and plot things because plotting things and just looking at these plots is a very simple way of quickly rejecting bad hypotheses. So the hypothesis here that our data could be summarized by the mean and stand standard deviation well, there are statistical tests that you could run to get a number out and say whether this is good or bad, but sometimes just simply looking at a plot like this is instantaneous. You don't need to get any numbers and figure out any probabilities. You just know straight up that the red and the purple are not the same thing. Now, if that sort of thing is intriguing to you, this hypothesis testing, I do have a, a course on statistics. I'll, I'll type up a link and put it in the downloadable resources. I won't talk about it here. Uh, because you guys are here for the data manipulation course and I don't want to like hawk all this other stuff. Okay, so that's it for this example and I will now jump straight into the next example which is all about merging. Of course, if you're doing this chapter by chapter then, you know, don't jump into that. Just jump into the next chapter and do everything sequentially.